In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, a week after Pentecost, which reminds us that the Trinity, in many ways, instructs humanity how to live in union with each other. And so let us ask the Lord forgiveness for the times we have ruptured that union among ourselves and with our God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God. The Lord possessed me, beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth, at the first, before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains or springs of water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and fields were not made, nor the first clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he fixed fast the foundations of the earth, when he set for the sea its limit, so that the water should not transgress his command, then was I beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, and I found delight in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks God. Thank God.
the stars which you are raised. What is man that you should keep him in mind? The son of man that you care for him. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Son and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. There is an ancient axiom in the church that the way we worship tells us what we believe. And today, as this Feast of Holy Trinity falls on the heels of Pentecost, the day in which the church comes to life and is born again, we have the image of the Trinity to reflect upon as a way of telling us that if humanity is going to be reformed in the image and likeness of God, we should pay attention to aspects of the life of God the Father and God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so today, we notice, first of all, in the readings that all three of them work together to bring about the creation of the world. We hear that the Holy Spirit is the craftsman as God sends his son to bring about the creation of the world by his word. It is a reminder that God not only creates us individually, but forms us in the image of the Trinity as a people. God has always wanted to form a people and that cuts across the image of the radical individual, the lone ranger, the person who lives on their own who's self-sufficient. No, we're really only fully human 
if in fact we understand that we belong to a people. Just as we cannot understand that God is God without understanding the Trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is as a people that we are created. But the other thing that we notice is that there's a lot of activity with this Trinity. One is giving over everything to each other and the Spirit gives over everything to us. There is a sense in which ongoing activity is going to be part of who we are. It is an understanding that all of our lives take time to be created and we journey along the path with each other. We realize that as Jesus says, he has things to say to us that can't come all at once. We learn incrementally along the journey of life and we have to be open to how the Spirit is leading us, something the Holy Father is trying to get across to us in the process of the Synod, that we need to discern where the Spirit is calling us. And the final thing that we hear in this Gospel is that we are to do all of this in order to bring about the flourishing of each one of us. Each individual is to be considered important in the life of the human family, of the people. We use our resources. We take all of our efforts in life that are directed not just to ourselves of gaining and earning, producing ourselves, consuming ourselves, but rather so that others will flourish. That gives us a whole different perspective about how we look upon the economy, how we look upon the goods of the earth, that they must always be directed to, so that everyone flourishes, so that everyone has a place at the table of life, that everyone in, in some way is cared for. I've always liked that story of a young boy who found out that the man next door lost his wife and he was walking by the house one day and saw him sitting on the porch, he was crying. And so the young boy went up and just sat on his lap. And his mother asked him afterwards, what did you say to the man? The little boy said, I didn't say anything. I just helped him cry. That is what we also are to take into consideration that we're here to help each other to flourish in human life. Our country, our city, the civic order, has many demands on it, many problems that vex us. And I think that we as believers can come to understand that the Lord is calling us, first of all, to claim each other as a people, to walk with each other and to build the reality of who we are, but also to realize that we're here to invest in each other, to give each other capacity, to help each other flourish. And as I reflect on that, the words, the opening words of the Constitution come to mind. Just listen to them again carefully. For in many ways they reflect what we hear today about the Gospel of how we are to be this people of God, these people who belong to one family, who in many ways are the image and likeness of God, the Trinity. This is how it reads. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. Today, the Trinity reminds us what it means to be a people, a people that walks together, but also lifts each other up. Indeed, today, the way we worship tells us about what we believe. As this Feast of the Trinity falls on the week right after the creation of the church, a church that is to be the image and likeness of God, so that all of humanity can live in the same way.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. As we respond to the call to live our human life in the image and likeness of God, we offer these petitions. That the church may always be true to her identity as a people of God by building unity in the human family and promoting the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by God's grace, our country and our leaders may always work to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to gun violence and the adoption of laws that protect and promote human life and dignity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead and those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God ever faithful, you delight in the human race. Quicken in us the gift of your spirit so that we may remain true to our calling to be a people made in the image of your divine life. We pray this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. Not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have received reveal to us of your glory. We believe equally of your Son and the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, their quality and majesty. For this is praised by the angels, archangels, cherubim and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, Together with Francis, our Pope, be your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy only say the word of my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. 
My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and am myself holy to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and mind as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity, undivided unity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. This weekend we dedicate before a week before Father's Day an annual collection for our retired priest. This collection helps to give them a small subsidy every month, but also is designed to cover their health care costs as they grow older. They have served you well in your parishes and deserve our support. We rely so much and very heavily on this collection each year in order to support the nearly 200 priests that we have in retirement. And so I ask once again your generosity. Let's make this year uh, a, a record year in having this collection uh, meet all the needs of our priests and making sure that we take care of them in their years of retirement. They have served us well. It's time now for us to respond in kind. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Priests play a significant role in our personal and spiritual lives, providing counsel and guidance. Dedicated to ministry, they serve our needs as Catholics from baptism through last rites. As we rely on the help of our priests, we can also assist them with their needs. The Priest Health and Retirement Fund provides housing and other benefits for active and retired priests of the Archdiocese of Chicago. Please consider making a gift at archchicago.org slash priest support or call 312-534-7959.